Eric is here with us. So uh, welcome uh, to everybody who has joined us on Facebook and here on the webinar on Zoom. Uh, this is the first visiting artist lecture this semester. My name is Branislava Kuburovic. I'm the program leader for MA Fine Art here at Prague College. And our guest uh, for the first lecture now is Hinek Alt. Uh, Hinek is a visual artist uh, working across media from photography, video, object installation. He's also the head of the Department of Photography and New Media at uh, the Film Academy here in Prague. And uh, I'm really grateful that he accepted our invitation in this weird uh, digital world in which we now coexist uh, as the little boxes on screen. But I think uh, he is very familiar to this kind of a world and works with it uh, with a lot of elegance and uh, uh, is a very good person to start this uh, uh, spring uh, series of talks. So Hinek, welcome. I will only uh, give you a few uh, points, uh, pointers for the lecture. Uh, you can, uh, uh, and please do, uh, start like whenever you have a question for Hinek, please uh, just uh, type it out either in the chat or in the Q&A here at Zoom, on Zoom, or in the chat on Facebook uh, above the live, uh, under the live stream. Uh, Hinek will present his projects uh, one by one, and we will have a time for a brief kind of breather in between, uh, where I will for sure uh, be there to ask some questions and also relay any questions from you, so that we don't do this as this kind of lump uh, some uh, lecture. Uh, which doesn't really work online. So yes, please do that. And then at the end of the lecture, we do invite you, uh, we would like to invite everyone who is on Zoom into the call. So it is enough to just raise your hand and let us know if you want to join us at the end of the lecture and uh, we will be here for you. Uh, Okay, so uh, I think Peter Knoblo, who is co <laughs> the, the other or or organizer of the VALS series is joining us, uh, but we will now actually disappear from your screen, both of us, uh, and let uh, Hinek take over with his talk. So um, as soon as Peter comes, so that we make sure he can also, he doesn't find himself lost in this digital world. He's still connecting. Um, He's still connecting. He's in the <laughs> car coming from Brno, so. Uh, connected. Yeah. Okay, so fine. So we can, uh, I, I think as soon as I disappear, Hinek, you will be there. Uh, mm -hmm. Please start, bye. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, this um, very warm, warm um, introduction. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. Um, it's an honor. Um, um, I would also like to say thanks to Prague College uh, for doing this. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, mm, I think Branislava was very optimistic my, uh, about my abilities. I, as everyone else, am um, just uh, uh, trying to cope with this um, with this um, sort of communication. So it's um, um, definitely uh, not going to be flawless. Um, um, I I do have the experience of um, um, teaching online, unfortunately, um, but um, um, I'm still um, learning and I'm trying to understand what the capacity of this uh, sort of online presence is. Um, I guess capacity in, in a sense of time and how much um, how much one can actually share um, in terms of the content and sentiment and um, um, some sort of um, um, legibility. Um, I've decided to present a couple of projects that um, to a certain extent overlap or there are um, common traits uh, for uh, all the projects. So, um, uh, as Branislava mentioned, I work across the media. Um, I would also say that my practice is um, sort of um, understood as uh, something like a wide practice. So I, um, I, um, I use a lot of media, but also um, um, the teaching practice, I consider part of my um, artist practice. Um, I, um, I also tend to organize some, um, say, events. Uh, um, I'm very much into post-production or um, intermedia practice. Um, uh, and I'm um, kind of fond on, um, of um, uh, working um, in a 
say, um, in a wide um, territory. Um, nevertheless, the uh, the projects that um, um, I'm going to present are all um, projects that were intended either for um, gallery or theater. Um, and uh, I consider them um, fairly traditional uh, projects. Um, the first one, um, I'm just going to share the screen and I'm going to talk over the over the screen. I think um, Branislava, I'll need your assistance because I, it seems that the the Zoom webinar won't let me do anything now. Okay, I'm talking to the uh, Victoria who is running the Zoom call, mm -hmm. so she needs to do this. Uh, it worked when we tried it, so let's. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, now it seems it's completely there. I can't. Um, okay, I can do it now. Hmm. Okay, you must do this. Do it. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the first project I'm going to show is um, actually um, it's a collaborative uh, project with uh, Alexandra White. It's from 2011, uh, so it's quite old. Um, uh, but I've intentionally uh, sort of uh, went into um, archive. Um, it's a project called uh, "You Can't Change the Weather," um, and uh, I think in the context of the talk. Uh, uh, it, it has a couple of in, um, important points to me. Uh, so it, um, it um, talks a lot about understanding photography. As uh, Branislava mentioned, photography is, uh, for me, one of the crucial um, media. Uh, but it's always uh, photography um, um, in, um, in a distance or um, uh, sort of um, understanding of photography as a, as a, as a uh, medium and very often as a self self reflective medium. So this this project is um, uh, strongly relying on um, uh, certain um, uh, reflection of the medium itself as one of the points. Um, the other point is um, mm, um, the other um, important point, uh, I suppose, is the collaborative nature. So uh, the whole uh, project was conceived in um, um, in a sort of dialogue. Um, uh, for me, the, uh, the dialogue is something that um, uh, runs through all the other projects. Uh, uh, it's an important quality. Dialogue usually generates um, uh, a third entity, someone. Um, it's not necessarily a synthesis of two um, artists, but it, it sort of generates um, completely different uh, kind of thinking. Mm. Uh, it obviously causes a lot of uh, friction, but then um, usually the friction becomes uh, fruitful in a sense of uh, uh, coming up with uh, entirely new uh, solutions. Mm. Uh, uh, it obviously um, uh, demystifies entirely the idea of uh, who is actually pressing the shutter or who is the, mm, the artist behind the camera, who is the who is the one who is actually uh, deciding what uh, what it is? Um, it's sort of it sort of uh, strongly relativizes, relativizes um, that, and um, um, uh, for me that is uh, an important element. Hmm. Uh, the whole project, um, um, as you can see, 
um, is um, and um, is series of images um, um, inspired by weather conditions. Um, uh, we um, we sort of um, used a book uh, from Brian O'Dorte. Uh, the book is called Inside the White Cube. Um, it's a seminal book on thinking about um, how um, uh, um, how a white cube as a gallery uh, emerged from, uh, say, 19th century Salon. Uh, so uh, Salon being something inhabited, uh, being part of um, the living space, uh, uh, something that um, uh, not only served to uh, show the art, but it also served um, for meetings. Um, and um, the old art is um, uh, sort of uh, observing how uh, the phenomenon of white cube, something um, dedicated entirely to uh, showing um, art, uh, how that emerged. Um, what kind of qualities this actually um, um, uh, required or what, what, what became the qualities um, strongly associated with a white cube uh, or a presentation of art in white cube. Um, it is interesting not only as a, as a sort of um, uh, thinking about uh, uh, just, a, just a gallery um, uh, principle, uh, um, but it's quite interesting to watch how um, the white cube became uh, both uh, uh, extremely democratic in a sense of um, uh, accessibility um, uh, and isolated, isolated in a sense of um, um, being as much um, closed off from the environment as possible. Mm. Uh, so Oda is talking about the white cube um, having a specific quality of um, using the artificial light, um, uh, having uh, floors, having uh, no windows, um, I mean, the floors uh, need to be either hardwood or soft material um, to uh, dampen the steps. Um, um, uh, back then, in 2011, we decided to actually reverse this um, um, this process, and we turned the gallery into a studio. Mm. So we actually closed uh, the gallery even further. We turned it into um, a sort of photographic makeshift um, uh, studio. And um, uh, we took inspiration from um, cinematographic um, effects of making uh, uh, different weather conditions, uh, whether it would be um, uh, clouds or snow or rain, uh, um, I guess sunrise, sunset, uh, strong wind. Um, uh, we're kind of interested in, in creating very uh, simple, obvious uh, uh, situations that um, mainly used cinematic uh, effects, uh, uh, always quite simple ones. Uh, but uh, these effects produced quite um, um, convincing results in a sense of uh, um, the appearance of the images. So uh, uh, we're quite interested in the, in the simple trickery of, um, of um, how you can, um, uh, not necessarily fool the viewer, but how you can work with the viewer. Um, every picture is a sort of, um, um, it's like a rebus or, a, um, yeah. Um, um, the idea behind the weather um, originates in the thinking of Doherty. So it's, uh, it's talking about this, um, or it's um, uh, thinking about um, uh, an isolated, entirely isolated uh, space. Uh, where weather has no place. Um, um, so white cube is, uh, is an environment that doesn't actually get um, influenced by the weather, weather conditions, whether um, it's a storm outside or it's sunny, it doesn't change the, the way the artworks look in the gallery. Um, uh, that was definitely a starting point, but then obviously there was an element of control. Um, uh, we um, we are kind of intrigued by this um, idea of um, um, humans' confidence to actually uh, change the weather, 
um, whether it was intentional or um, now, as we know, we've managed to change the weather. Uh, uh, so um, the whole idea was, uh, or the whole hmm, sort of um, um, discourse we had was about how much you can you can sort of um, um, create new weather or how much you can create conditions that you um, um, that you imagine or plan. Uh, the whole project that I'm showing now actually resulted in uh, a booklet or a small book um, containing, um, I think, 32 images. Uh, so you're looking at the whole project as it um, as it then concluded. Uh, um, we've um, we've then exhibited this, uh, the the project only in a form of the book. So the book was uh, uh, was shown as a pile of um, yeah, it was shown as a pile of books in the middle of the gallery. Um, and it, um, it didn't use the gallery um, anymore as an exhibition space. It was more like a point of distribution. Uh, I think the, uh, the strong idea behind this was that um, it's, um, it's no point to exhibit these images as images anymore. They can just right away become part of the catalog. Um, they, uh, they, they were made in the gallery and uh, we can exhibit them already as a printed material, um, as a conclusion. Mm. Um, I would like to switch to another project now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, hmm. so this is much more recent project. Uh, this is project called Avatar Z. Um, uh, it um, it sort of evolved over time, um, and um, mm, um, it sort of took shape um, last year. Uh, what you're looking at is a uh, uh, documentation from a uh, performative uh, lecture, which we did um, uh, at uh, Studio Hrdinu, an alternative theater space, uh, uh, where we created this um, um, sort of uh, simple uh, stage design uh, with, um, with um, um, a sort of dominant uh, video projection. Mm. Uh, I think I need to run through the background of the project. Uh, uh, the, um, the core idea or the mm, sort of core work behind the project was a, a research project that we did uh, together with um, mm, mm, my friend, uh, um, an extremely interesting artist, Martin Z, who started uh, researching his father's uh, estate um, uh, um, sometime prior to that. Um, he, um, mm, the work, um, <clears throat> um, so the work of um, uh, Martin Zet's father, Miloš Zet, uh, uh, is something um, quite um, untangible, quite um, uncontainable. Um, it's, a, um, it's a large um, um, group of, uh, uh, finished sculptures, uh, um, uh, models, uh, sketches. Uh, um, it's large in um, in quantity, but also in in the um, in the mass. Um, Miloš Zet was um, uh, was a sort of prominent uh, uh, social realist sculptor from uh, who was active from um, late sixties all the way to early nineties. So he um, he entirely uh, dedicated ded dedicated himself to um, uh, to the role of uh, a socialist realist uh, sculptor. He um, uh, he only worked for public space. Um, it was an artist who was not interested in exhibiting um, uh, in galleries. Um, um, 
were together with architects, um, uh, they were sort of shaping um, um, the urbanistic um, extension of institutions. So uh, usually his um, um, sculpture pieces were part of uh, um, a sort of larger context of uh, institutions or um, uh, something that you would call now a public infrastructure. So um, hospitals or um, 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 shopping clusters, um, theaters and so on. Um, it, um, mm, he used um, throughout um, all his career, he basically used uh, um, uh, something that we called, uh, uh, that we call now uh, late modernist uh, language, uh, uh, something that um, evolved over time, but it, um, it always um, sort of sustained traces of uh, um, uh, uh, say progressive uh, uh, sculpture of the turn of 19th and 20th century, but also with traces um, of um, um, sculpt, um, uh, um, sculpture strategies of um, say Renaissance, um, uh, um, uh, depicting um, um, uh, materials or uh, shapes uh, in an extremely um, uh, illusory uh, fashion. Uh, uh, something um, his career would be now described as mastery, something um, quite physical, uh, uh, where one needed to be extremely skillful. Uh, so the whole project uh, uh, um, started as an inventory, as a, as a sort of overview of this whole estate, which is now extremely difficult to um, uh, institutionalize. Uh, obviously, he's got, uh, he's got um, uh, really interesting works and um, some works that are not so interesting or perhaps not uh, uh, not so um, um, yeah, uh, not so interesting. Um, so uh, the whole estate, as uh, as such, is um, is an um, um, is an interesting case of burden. Something that really sort of weighs down. Um, it takes a lot of space. Uh, it's uh, it's hard to uh, negotiate with. Um, uh, so after we've done a sort of inventory of the whole thing, we uh, we were trying to um, to um, come with a, with another um, um, step in the whole process. So we've um, uh, started talking about um, um, sort of um, creating um, 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 a lecture or uh, perhaps an angle, new angle on the whole. Um, uh, also, um, uh, ideological uh, issue, uh, and we came up with an idea of um, um, lecture with uh, um, with strong elements of performance. So something that we now call performative lecture, where um, the information is um, present, but um, the uh, the performative part is sort of dominant. Uh, so we've um, we have um, expanded this whole um, idea of the lecture into um, an augmented uh, live uh, video feed um, that was projected. Now you can see it on the on the uh, on the back um, of the of the stage. Um, uh, I'm just gonna play a quick uh, uh, trailer. Mm, I'm sorry, the trailer is in Czech, but I think it's no. Um, Mm, it's not necessarily about the mm, um, content of the video. It's uh, it's much more about um, sorry, I need to. So I'm just going to play a little trailer and then I'll come back to it. Oh, Adam, I think I didn't share the sound.
tomto bodě je možná dobré hrát s otevřenými kartami. Je na místě říct, že základním stavebním elementem celého projektu Avatar Z je moment opakovaného pocitu selhávání a to na nejrůznějších úrovních. Většina členů původního výzkumného týmu nemá k performativnímu žánru blízko, každou výpověď provází znehybňující tréma a ani skrytí se za avatary zetových soch tuto překážku nečiní některak snadnější. Avatar je pojem z hinduismu, který původně znamená sestup, přeneseně potom v tělení. V současnosti se používá jako označení pro grafickou podobu hráče v počítačové hře nebo v jiném uživatelském rozhraní. Vlastně najednou jsem si uvědomil, asi ten veřejný prostor, o kterým jako se bavíme, vůbec nikdy existoval. Stojící nahý jinoch váha těla spočívá na pravé noze. V případě naší performance mě zajímá ta nejednoznačnost. To znamená, jsou tyhle digitální sochy avataři nás nebo svých fyzických předloh. Ruce vysí volně podél těla. Hlava mírně natočena nahoru. Tomáš Pospíšil píše o normalizačním režimu neviditelnosti. Kamená matka s dítětem se stala součástí sídliště se stejnou samozřejmostí, jako dopravní značení nebo plakáty. Pro mě tady ten, tady ta spolupráce byla právě zajímavá z, z, tady z toho pohledu, že vlastně jsem si uvědomil, nakolik vlastně jsem v předchozích letech jako umělec formálně přemýšlel o veřejný prostoru. Zet nikdy nepřemýšlel o svých plastikách jako o samostatné entitě. Téměř veškeré jeho realizace se váží ke konkrétnímu místu. To propojení uh, právě s tím, uh, do jaké míry je to historický a do jaké míry je to současný, si myslím, že může vytvářet určitý konflikt nebo může, může stát potom za nějakou vlastně vznikající debatou. So basically what, what you saw was a trailer for um, a recording of the whole lecture. Um, uh, we're still in, um, in process of uh, finishing a full, uh, full length uh, recording. It's, uh, it's got about um, an hour um, and it's gonna actually um, 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 sort of follow the whole lecture. The whole lecture was uh, um, mm, trying to uh, sort of pass on um, a lot of uh, information in terms of um, the practice of uh, Miloš Zet. Um, um, again, someone who was strongly associated with certain um, ideology, with certain political system, uh, who identified actually with that. Um, by doing that, I think we were trying to um, sort of uh, reflect on, um, on the complexity of the critique. Uh, well, um, I think we were trying to, um, uh, to try to see how um, uh how we can um, be less uh, critical to the, to his position and much more interested or intrigued in uh, certain strategies that we found uh, quite interesting uh, I, I guess the main one was um, uh, was the discussion of the public space uh, so something that we feel um, strongly um, uh, as something contemporary something quite uh, uh, quite important and uh, strongly um, associated with uh, uh, privatization of public space and also certain ambiguity of the of the of the term itself. Um, uh, another important element was the uh, was a sort of um, uh, gamey um, uh, idea of the augmented reality. So um, what you saw was a live feed um, of the lecture with uh, uh, with the sculptures. Um, uh, turning alive, uh, uh, obviously just for the duration of the um, lecture and um, um, also um, having um, um, sort of voice, uh, 
I think it, it, it was somewhere uh, uh, between um, a Czech um, children um, story for a television and Hollywood, somewhere quite in between. Uh, so something that was uh, for us um, technically quite challenging, but obviously the result is uh, more sort of uh, schematic. Um, uh, so we, uh, we kind of enjoyed the idea of uh, looking through that um, effect or uh, being quite able to, uh, to distinguish uh, the layers of uh, reality in there. Um, uh, the, um, the case of um, uh, Miloš that uh, um, sort of provided me with, um, with a lot of um, ideas or some uh, material that I, uh, I became intrigued with and I um, sort of continued actually working with um, some, some of the elements uh, uh, I'm just going to show now the, um, uh, so this is an installation I did um, uh, actually in similar, um, in similar um, time. So it's, a, it's about a year and a half ago. And then it's an installation within a group show um, uh, in, uh, uh, Bratislava at uh, Zahorian van Espen uh, gallery. Um, uh, the, um, the whole uh, concept of the show was actually sort of uh, uh, revisiting um, uh, 1960s in, in um, um, uh, back then socialist Czechoslovakia. Um, I've um, borrowed the um, uh, one of the models of uh, Miloš Z uh, for this installation. And I've used um, a strategy of deconstructing uh, a photograph. I've, um, I've sort of um, borrowed uh, images from a newspaper. Uh, I was uh, researching what, uh, how uh, sculptures are um, transported when they are being removed. Um, this being quite often the case of Miloš Z uh, sculptures. Nevertheless, I haven't actually, uh, um, taken uh, a specific uh, case of the uh, sculpture removal. I was much more interested in the aesthetics of the of the um, bandaging and the wrapping of the or um, um, of the sculpture itself. I was interested in the in the act of lifting the sculpture in the air uh, while protecting it, uh, protecting it from being being sort of squeezed, um, uh, but obviously tying it together as if. Um, um, in um, a bondage or um, uh, a similar uh, practice. Uh, um, I, so I was, I was really intrigued by this dichotomy uh, that I found on images of um, sculptures being, uh, being transported and I've uh, tried to reconstruct it. So it's like a, reserve, a reversed, uh, reversed photography where uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the journalistic uh, images were just an inspiration uh, and I've actually worked in, in the area of um, sort of an object um, uh, or an installation, I suppose. It's, a, it's not necessarily object. Um, um, uh, for me, it's quite important to actually um, uh, then, because um, the object doesn't exist anymore, it, um, it was just um, for the duration of the exhibition. So I was, uh, I was really... Uh, Curious how this actually um, keeps on living then again in the documentation uh, of the exhibition. Um, um, so, um, now we, we're actually uh, moving on to yet another project. Um, uh, this is a sort of um, uh, connecting element. Uh, so it's an image uh, that I've taken in the storage. This is um, um, a still life um, uh, of the storage filled with Miloš that's uh, sculpture. So I was, I was really intrigued by the juxtapositions uh, uh, that occur um, sort of naturally without interference, without any kind of uh, uh, intention. It's basically just uh, uh, models and sculptures piled up um, and they create this uh, um, super multi-layered um, composition that I was just documenting. 
um, um, anyhow, they pictured and became um, part of um, an exhibition that um, um, actually opened last October. Uh, uh, the exhibition um, as a whole is called How Soon Is Now? Um, it's uh, using four different pro projects, sort of rotating uh, around um, Mm, an idea of um, hard and soft in infrastructures. Um, what I'm showing now is a is an image of installation of uh, another research that I did in um, in an archive of the City Gallery of Prague. Um, so I was uh, more and more interested in this idea of uh, removing sculptures from their original um, place. Uh, um, I have found all the documentation images that I could um, just in the City Gallery archive. Uh, I was interested in seeing how much one institution um, take, um, of um, what's the what's the what's the volume of the of the sculptures that the institution takes care of, um, and it's um, um, so this is. Um, an installation of um, 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 actually a display that I'm going to now show. Uh... Oops, sorry. I'm so sorry. This is not intentional. Um, so it's a um, it's an e-ink display. Um, it's something that we uh, know from um, e-books like uh, Kindle. Uh, I've used the raw um, parts of the um, um, e-book uh, uh, together with a um, colleague of mine. We've created this uh, presentation device that shows about thirty images of uh, the sculptures being. Um, um, removed and um, uh, transported. Uh, again, I was really interested in this uh, aesthetic layers that um, uh, this whole act uh, creates. Of course, uh, it was also um, filled with uh, with uh, um, rich uh, layers of um, um, ideological content. It, uh, it very often was uh, um, really old sculptures that were transported to um, say lapidarium or um, uh, storage to be protected but some of them were um, quite um, ideological so they would be from 50s 60s 70s it was really a mixture of um, all sorts of uh, reasons why these um, uh, sculptures were uh, removed um, in the same moment I was interested in sort of creating um, um, a continuous um, presentation or a slideshow where these sculptures just coexist. Um, um, I was also uh, interested in isolating them from the environment so they um, I've used um, something that I call um, um, digital collage so they're cut out um, uh, sort of roughly from the environment and um, uh, this uh, e-ink display gives them a completely peculiar materiality. Um, as we know, e-ink display is a physical um, physical display uh, that has the capacity to actually change from black to white, um, but it still is a physical display. So it has this uh, uh, this weird um, 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 sort of um, um, feeling as uh, somewhere in between newspaper and computer screen. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so,
Um, so now I'm showing documentation of the whole exhibition. Again, it's a, an exhibition um, that was open just last October um, or last November. Um, um, showing some of the um, documentation shots. Uh, you've just seen uh, one, um, one sort of smaller project that was part of it. That was the, the sculpture in the air on the eating display. And now we're uh, moving to um, another project uh, uh, that was part of the same um, installation. Um, it was um, a video called um, um, Untitled um, in brackets, uh, Spable and Ketamine. Uh, I'm just gonna play a couple of minutes of this video and then I will talk more about this. So perhaps I can can uh, keep it running another while, and I can just uh, talk about um, um, how this um, this whole work uh, started. Uh, so I feel like it's a synthesis of uh, um, a lot of uh, the strategies that you um, uh, you just saw. Um, uh, it's um, 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 I guess it's important to say that they. Uh, what you're looking at is a puppet uh, that was created uh, in 1920, so 100 years ago, by Josef Skupa, uh, who was a puppeteer. Um, he um, sort of designed uh, uh, the character called Spable, uh, who was supposed to, um, um, in a grotesque way, uh, reflect on a, on a character of a, um, a, um, a sort of towny, a slacker who. Um, uh, who is very old-fashioned. Um, uh, it's trying to, um, I, uh, I suppose, reflect on a, a 19, 1920s sentiment uh, uh, against uh, 19th century. Um, uh, uh, the guy is um, sort of dumb-witted. Um, he's uh, often um, target of jokes without realizing. Um, um, he was uh, later accompanied by um, a character playing his son. So it was a smaller puppet. Um, uh, it, um, I think it was um, at, um, throughout the history, it was extremely popular uh, puppet uh, uh, that um, was continuously sort of lo losing um, any kind of content. Um, um, it was um, the, the, the joke uh, was um, um, sort of draining itself out, and um, um, essentially now it's a puppet usually used in a children um, um, children place, um, uh, and I um, uh, think it's a uh, it's sort of marginal. So I was curious in 
uh, in um, attempting at um, um, at some sort of emancipation of this character, or uh, maybe sidetracking the clear um, um, clear situation that um, he has um, he's confined to or he has to live in. Uh, uh, it's um, um, I, I guess I was kind of critical about this uh, this uh, idea of ridiculing um, um, or uh, uh, scapegoating um, um, someone um, as such. Uh, so um, I um, I came up with the strategy of uh, uh, actually becoming myself the puppeteer uh, uh, again using a three D. Um, motion capture de um, um, device that would allow me to um, to actually move this uh, move the puppet uh, um, just by moving myself um, so the puppet um, essentially uh, repeats uh, my movement um, uh, uh, the idea that i had was uh, to uh, try to disconnect uh, the strings attached to uh, the limbs and uh, head of the puppet, uh, uh, and um, um, sort of naively, uh, I was trying to free it from its fate, um, uh, while knowing that this is going to fail. But um, um, I was interested in seeing uh, what kind of result it's going to produce if I cut the um, metaphorically cut the strings of the puppet by infusing myself in um, uh, ketamine, which is a, a recreational drug, originally anesthetic um, for um, uh, farm animals, um, uh, now uh, quite widely used as a recreational club uh, uh, drug uh, that um, um, mildly cures um, uh, depression, mm, has a very mild, um, uh, after effects, um, um, and it renders the user quite uh, um, sort of absent, uh, absent in a sense of uh, losing the notion of the space and time around. Um, so I was, uh, I was trying to um, uh, sort of disconnect myself be while being a, um, a puppeteer, disconnect myself from, from the role of controlling the puppet. The puppet then stares, as you can see, uh, because it's repeating my own uh, movements. It sort of blankly stares into. I was trying to think about the metaphor of, of a say wild animal that was captured for a, a long time, and then um, it stares out of the open uh, cage once it's being once it's being released back into nature, and it mm, sort of um, doesn't trust the uh, uh, the, the uh, freedom it uh, it's looking at. Um, I'm not sure if this is all uh, quite part of the, the work, but this is definitely a thinking that went behind my, um, uh, yeah. So um, uh, we're looking at a small portion. I was basically trying to exhaust the whole time that I was in intoxicated. I was trying to use all the um, hour and 40 minutes uh, while the, the effects, uh, until the effects sort of wore off. Um, um, so it's quite a long, boring video where nothing really happens. Um, yeah. Mm. I think we can, uh, we can, um, we can stop the sharing now. Uh, we can slowly move to last two bits of the presentation. Uh, only while Hinek is preparing these last bits, I will kind of let uh, you talk uh, for longer because it was just really interesting to see the uh, the differences in the continuation mm -hmm. of the projects. But if people do have questions, please start uh, putting them in the Q&A or the chat. And then as soon mm -hmm. as uh, Hinek finishes, we will go into the Q&A. But I think we, there's no need to break. Uh, yeah, I think we have another um, six, seven minutes ahead of us uh, in the okay. presentation. Um, OK. Um, Hmm. 
So I can't see it now. No, mm, sorry. I know, not this one. Oh, this one. So um, I'm back again, coming to the uh, How Soon Is Now exhibition sort of floor plan. Um, uh, as I said, the Spabel um, video was part of um, um, part of the installation, as well as a large series of um, uh, images that um, are called Untitled Infrastructures on the Beach. Uh, coincidentally, um, um, in the same moment, we've published a, a book, uh, uh, which I would like to be sort of conclusion of the um, uh, of the presentation. In the meantime, it's uh, I think it's good to mention that um, um, I have started uh, the presentation with the images of the weather in the um, that um, in the installation or the the project that was inspired by the. Uh, O'Doherty's um, uh, meditation on white cube, um, and I'm sort of concluding with the shots of the exhibition that is currently closed. Of course, the exhibition was opened uh, only for a um, um, week or um, 10 days, uh, um, and it's still on, even though you can't see it. So I, I think um, uh, uh, we're finishing at the point where um, we're looking at another um, uh, extremely isolated gallery. Uh, it's um, not necessarily democratic, but it's definitely quite isolated. Um, so the last project um, is a book. Um, um, oh, I can't do this. I'm sorry, I need to cancel. So it, it's a book called Untitled um, Infrastructures and the Beach. Um, it's a book that we published in the same moment as the exhibition was open. Uh, the book contains um, uh, about 60 images of uh, 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 holes in the street. Um, uh, it, um, it shows pipes and uh, um, cables, earth uh, being dug up. Um, uh, I was um, for a long time um, or always intrigued by the uh, Situationist uh, French movement of the 70s um, for two reasons, um, in particular to this project. Um, so they've um, devised a method called derivé, um, um, uh, so-called purposeless um, exploration of the city. Um, um, uh, so a walk through the city, which has no... Uh, um, no aim, no uh, no purpose. It's about uh, looking um, uh, and experiencing the city. Um, um, I guess enjoying also not having the um, uh, aim or um, target or um, um, finish. Uh, um, I've used this method um, um, as a way of finding these holes in the street. Um, uh, so the holes uh, emerge without being announced. Um, I, um, there was no method of uh, finding these holes in the, in the street um, by um, um, researching. It's, uh, I'm sure it would be possible, but it uh, would definitely be more complicated than actually going out and blindly finding them. Um, uh, but there was another layer that I, um, I, I, um, I sort of took from the um, uh, thinking of situationists uh, from 70s, and that was the idea of uh, um, the beach uh, underneath the pavement. Um, uh, so entirely different um, reality being right underneath the pavement, the pavement being, uh, being a sort of metaphor of the structure of something solid, uh, something... Um, 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 that could be cleaned, and the beach being something um, uh, quite organic and um, I suppose filled with um, enjoyment and um, leisure and free time. Mm. And I think they uh, um, 
I was interested in these images to actually discover uh, um, yet another thing, uh, and that was the uh, the visible um, so-called um, hard infrastructure. So all the pipes, uh, um, mm, uh, cables um, are not uh, not necessarily uh, mm, uh, beach, but they are uh, like a physical. Uh, in, um, uh, physical veins that actually bind us uh, together. So I was, um, um, and they are the reason why city, for example, works. Um, I have uh, for the book. I have invited four writers to um, uh, to work with the images uh, and to use them as sort of projection screens. Um, I feel like the images are quite um, generic. They could literally mean anything. Uh, uh, and I was curious to see um, or to hear what the, um, what the writers could um, actually elaborate uh, while looking at uh, the images. Um, so um, um, inside the book, there are four um, individual texts, uh, or actually five, four and a half. Um, I've invited Angel Smeralda, who is a curator, uh, I have invited uh, uh, Yusi Parika, uh, a media theorist, uh, um, Jen Kratochvil, again, who's a curator and who kind of helped me put the, um, edit the book together. And then uh, um, we found um, Gianfranco Sanguinetti, who was actually uh, part of, um, who was a uh, part of um, uh, the, um, uh, the original, French Situationist movement uh, from 70s and who happens to live in Prague. So we've invited these four people to uh, reflect on the, on, the, on the images. And I would like to read uh, one text from Angel Smeralda that I feel is quite uh, uh, critical and quite precise. A schism in the earth reveals the arterial network that binds us into one human organic compound. The humus or soil made of decomposed vegetal and animal matter is our only lifeline. It is true that a treasure lies buried in the ground, but it is not gold, it is filth. It is our sustenance, our survival, and our mutual dependence. We continue to live according to a de deranged value scale, distorted by a society that values gold above ground. And that has tipped the balance by extracting what lies below in order to burn it and release it into the fragile atmosphere. What we have found here is a buried treasure. These pipes keep, uh, keep, keep us clean and healthy. In a society focused on a game of appearances, the underfunded and ill-equipped infrastructure of hospitals and morgues has exploded in the face of self-aggrandizing modern European society a society that values the appearance of wealth on, alta, on altars rather than the sustainable balance of preserving what lies below. The book reveals the hidden intestines of an urban Leviathan. Biological connections between community members run deep through the ground. The oddly positioned and often precarious looking materials of our underground sewage system are momentarily revealed as the arterial flow of, uh, of our lifeblood, flushing our uh, pestilential mass and providing fresh running water. The sudden opening of the ground reveals not the gates of hell, but the underappreciated workers, engineers, and mechanics who provide the sanitary basis of our drinking and washing water each and every day. The soil might be made of dead organic matter, but we rely on it for our lives and sustenance. It is our safety net. What lies beneath, the unsightly, the perverse, is what keeps us alive. In our contemporary game of mirrors, a capitalism that looks for quick fix solutions, we have yet to overcome our aversion to the matter that sustains us, that which keeps us alive and is hidden from the frames of the city. This book serves as a portion of its elevation into that which is framed, elevated, 
and presented far away from its hidden subterranean holes. It is an aesthetic framing of that which was never meant to be open, but is nevertheless an integral whole. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I think that's it. Thank you, super. Thank you so much. So what we want to do now is invite people in if this kind of works. If not, we will just start the Q&A and hope some questions will come up in the chat or in the Q&A box here on uh, Zoom or mm -hmm. on Facebook. So uh, yeah, I want, so if you want to come in, raise a hand. I hope our um, <laughs> webinar organizer will let you in. Uh, if not, we will just start uh, this conversation. So. Uh, thank you very much, Kinek, for the talk. I think it uh, actually really works well seeing the projects uh, one next to the other rather as, uh, than isolated because, as you said yourself before, we started in, in a way the, the uh, NOD gallery uh, exhibition, which is now happening in this weird uh, public but forbidden space is going Absolutely. back to that uh, mm -hmm. exhibition from 10 years mm -hmm. ago where the gallery mm -hmm. again became a weather producing magic ritual kind of yeah, space, yeah. but mm -hmm. not accessible as, uh, as a physical or public space uh, necessarily so like there's so many things that uh, that come up but one i want to start with is that i really like um, this kind of overt um, emancipatory gesture that comes through in these projects. So there is an anti uh, uh, emancipate uh, or emancipation has uh, had a kind of a, a bad mm -hmm. vibe that goes together with the socialism that uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, since the 90s has been a, a difficult one to deal with. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a really interesting kind of return or, or reclaiming of this idea of eman emancipation of both yeah. memory, but also of this uh, of, uh, of, of figure of a puppet uh, or the individual or the infrastructures. So mm -hmm. could you, is it, is it something you feel is important? So, yes, I think um, uh, there's, a, there's a portion that is very rational or uh, very conscious, um, um, something that I, um, Mm, yes, I suppose I, I am interested in uh, strategies of uh, emancipation, but maybe also um, uh, plainly paying attention to ordinary. I think uh, um, so I feel like uh, oppression um, is quite often hidden behind the ordinary. Um, and I think that this was the title uh, uh, of the lecture was the infrastructures of the obvious. And I think, um, um, I'm, so I'm, I'm extremely interested or intrigued by um, looking at how things work and uh, whether, uh, um, whether they work differently if we just look at them uh, from a different angle. So um, that would be the sort of um, um, uh, rational part, but then intuitively, of course, I'm um, I, I, I think uh, uh, there's always a layer of uh, politics in um, in whatever we do, even if we go shopping, it's a, it, it could be understood as political. So uh, uh, there's no way that we can we can um, we can um, sort of uh, talk, tear away um, uh, um, um, certain political strategies. Um, uh, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be activistic at all. I'm, uh, I'm absolutely uh, curious much more in, um, in, um, in sort of um, intriguing certain um, or uh, triggering certain, uh, certain change of perspective. Um, um, and I'm not trying to um, absolutely work with uh, political content, but I'm, I'm kind of curious uh, uh, how this political content emerges anyway. Um, so, uh, that for me is quite um, quite interesting. How how the um, how the um, the layer of uh, uh, politics, whether it would be historical or uh, contemporary, always appears. So it's um, uh, yes. Sometimes it's more subtle. Sometimes it's uh, it's quite obvious. Obviously, uh, if you work with a social socialist realist um, sculptor, it's uh, you're right away there. But I'm not trying to. Uh, we're not we were not trying to um, build a monument for this guy. We were much more trying to really dissect or un, um, sort of analytically think about what what um, how he um, functioned as a 
as a sort of um, um, uh, uh, artist who was fully engaged in um, in certain ideology. Yeah, so that in a way you could say that uh, emancipating really is more about being able to see through these uh, surface realities than absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we have the first uh, guest here with us. I think, Christy, if you want to ask a question, uh, in order for everyone to see you, please turn your camera on as well. Oh, <laughs> yes. I am not sure how. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. Then just ask, ask, ask on. We can hear you. Okay. Um. So uh, you mentioned this kind of your other new perspectives on on uh, artwork. And because I I started first thinking of what you do as an institutional critique, but you also mm -hmm. you not only offer perspect new perspectives on the kind of surroundings, the, the white cube, the institution, but also on the mm, perspectives mm. art and artwork has had, artists have had in themselves. Mm. Um, and I was interested in the first, the weather artwork series, because mm -hmm. uh, I saw some of my favorite artworks were in, in this photography series. You have the, the Nimbus cloud by I think Bernard Smil, then you also have the rainbow artwork by Olaf Eliasson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could recognize in this series of whether is it on purpose? Um, was it? On, are you referencing other artworks in this series, or was no, it kind of coincidental? I'm, I'm completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, thanks a lot for the for the question. So I feel like there are two layers to the question. One was uh, about the institutional critique. So I, I suppose with the with the weather project, you could say that that was definitely kind of um, yes, um, um, the aftermath of the institutional critique. Um, and I think um, I always found the strategies kind of um, um, inspiring. But I'm I'm not sure that the core of uh, my practice. But I I don't, I don't want to interpret myself. But I mm. I would never think that my uh, practice would be based in um, in institutional critique. But it's definitely uh, strongly influenced by some of the strategies. Mm. Um, um, so I would um, um, yeah I would be honored to incorporate it into my uh, vocabulary. Uh, um, and then um, I think um, the uh, Olaf Eliasson or the clouds uh, references. Uh, I think not not necessarily in this particular project. Uh, in the, in some older works, especially in this um, collaborative um, um, dialogue, uh, for example, with uh, Alexandra White, we did uh, reference other works strongly. Uh, not necessarily in this project. So I think it's it's more um, uh, sort of intuitive um, or maybe coincidence. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we were sort of drawing the inspiration directly from uh, cinematographic uh, effects. And uh, I think we were kind of interested that there is this uh, film studios that are um, quite often rented out um, internationally. Um, and also the special effects are quite um, well established, the Czech um, special effects um, um, engineers or whatever you call these guys um, are um, are quite renowned. So we we actually Googled um, and we were looking up uh, uh, tricks and uh, recipes on how to do uh, certain effects. Uh, so it was much more um, much more sourcing out um, uh, a very um, practical um, say uh, field. Okay. But um, um, thanks for uh, seeing uh, seeing. Um, some other works there, which I don't mind at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I'm, while we, we wait for other questions, I'm going to ask uh, another thing that I really like, or at least kind of pick up on, or like to think is is uh, is coming through, is this idea of a third entity. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned it uh, as, a, as what kind of uh, starts existing in the friction of collaboration, but in a way there is a third entity also in the Avatar uh, project, or there is a kind of, is there maybe some more fruitful 
thinking that can relate other projects to this third mm -hmm. element that mm -hmm. you yeah absolutely I, I think it's a um, um, it's an important element and I think something um, also um, uh, in teaching um, 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 we are sort of functioning as a as a team uh, so and uh, this is something uh, super intriguing for me or super mm, uh, fulfilling uh, I suppose that um, um, I feel that with a, any kind of engagement in 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 um, in a collaborative um, um, uh, project you you start developing this third entity and um, it's it's I, I suppose it's it's quite hard to predict what the what the nature of this third entity in each case is going to be it obviously varies and it produces um as i said at the at the very beginning and it always any kind of collaboration produces a lot of friction so it it, it produces a lot of uh, a lot of so so to say problems uh but um uh, uh, i suppose that's the um that's exactly the starting um, um, moment of um, of uh, sort of new um, uh, new uh, perspective on things, um, and um, I think this is where the dialogue um, or multilog in uh, in some cases becomes interesting, um, and it's also quite interesting um, in, um, uh, for example, in Avatar Z, uh, it um, it was definitely. Um, uh, that because we were a large group of um, um, sort of research group um, uh, of um, say six people, but of course with with different um, uh, level of engagement. Um, um, some uh, some people um, only had um, um, sort of um, very specific roles, um, and um, some of us uh, were much more interested in the big picture. Um, but no one, none of us knew where this project is going to actually go. And I, I think this, uh, uh, that was kind of interesting. So the third entity and also a common goal, uh, um, um, which is sort of shifting or glimmering somewhere um, off, the, um, off the visible horizon is, uh, is definitely um, um, an interesting moment for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I really, really mm -hmm. like the, how it kind of worked into the aesthetic, mm -hmm. into the dynamic of mm -hmm. how things end up being. It's really nice to see. Uh, okay, I'm going to keep asking because people are quiet. It's this webinar format is weird uh, for everyone, I think. So, so there's no kind of real connection or need to ask a question. So um, I, I, I want to maybe go back to this idea of public space, of the space of a of a gallery or, um, yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so to think, I yeah, mean, it was, I, it was cracking for a second. Uh, yeah. Okay, can you can you hear me now? Yeah. Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the internet is. Uh, I think it's mine, probably. Uh -huh. I, mm, mm, I don't know. Mm. Okay. It was a bit. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I was just thinking maybe to 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 re return to this idea of the public space of so the gallery, first of all, but public space in in more like if, if, with your book, the holes in the street are the infrastructure mm -hmm. of the public space as well. Your exhibition is now locked in something that should be a public space. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, I went out just before the start of the talk and the street is not really quite a public space because we are like mm -hmm. strongly regulated in our behavior and isolated so mm -hmm. how do you kind of think the public space in relation to your work um, like is there is there something that is um, that is a, 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 an ongoing concern or is it just mm -hmm. my reading which is also possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you this is a super interesting question but I'm, I, I'm afraid I have no um, clear um, answers, so I'm, I'm as much concerned as you are in terms of what's happening now. Um, uh, it's really, it's really uh, sort of weird or hard to process. So, what this, um, 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 like in in the case of the closed galleries, what this is gonna, um, mm, how this is going to evolve. Uh, I'm sure that for a lot of institutions, this is going to be a fundamental uh, blow in a sense of uh, really um, struggling to sustain after uh, we are hopefully going to pull ourselves together and get vaccinated or, yeah. Um, uh, so 
um, I guess yes, I am. I am definitely interested in the in the modes of uh, public space. So, um, for example, when we were talking about the uh, um, uh, Miloš Z or Avatar Z project, um, it's uh, it's about um, mm, sort of uh, trying to understand what is what is it really the public space between buildings in the city. Uh, to what extent it is really accessible to everyone. And then um, uh, I'm not necessarily interested in working for the public space. So I'm not an, uh, a street artist or I'm not someone who, who would like to have um, sculptures in, um, um, on the corner. Um, uh, um, in that respect, I'm much more interested in this sort of democratic nature of the gallery. So the, the gallery is, not, um, is a closed space that um, isn't um, producing a visual smog. It's not trying to, it's not trying to interfere with everything else. It's, a, it's not a billboard uh, um, sort of shouting out. It's, it is, uh, it has certain um, a voice um, uh, and by uh, entering the gallery, you are sort of, you are, uh, you are entering also the dialogue with, the, with either the institution or the, the works that are displayed there. Um, so I am I am super curious about that. I'm um, in in respect to what's happening now. I have no idea what, what kind of effect it's going to have. Um, I'm curious. I'm, I'm I would love to invite everyone for uh, my um, sort of closing of the exhibition on Tuesday next week at eight. We're going to stream uh, music from the gallery. So we're going to sort of create um, a listening session. Uh, with um, audiophiliac um, music, um, um, sort of equipment for the for the exhibition, but I feel like this is a, a, an extremely naive gesture. So I think it's an attempt to you know, sort of um, organize something that is again intended for this uh, online environment, and I think everyone is oversaturated with the online content and. Everyone is desperately craving uh, physical presence, um, physical, yeah. Um, um, so I, I'm, I'm, I tend to be optimistic, and I think uh, again the gallery is going to be crucial for a gallery is going to be crucial for meeting other people, and hopefully I am um, I'm not too optimistic. So I um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe Cynic only where is, will it be uh, streamed from the NLP? So so it's going to be NOD uh, Facebook, um, uh, so maybe, uh, but yeah. it's going to be streamed, I think, to YouTube. But it, uh, the link is going to be on NOD, uh -huh. NOD um, uh, Facebook, yes. Yeah. So, so for everyone who wants to join, it's on Facebook, it's the NOD gallery. Yeah, yeah, we're going to announce it. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I will be more than happy to invite you for the... Yeah. Um, for the event, and you we, can share it with everyone. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. also share it from this event on Facebook, so people. Mm -hmm. can, so yeah, whoever is not mm -hmm. too oversaturated is welcome to join. Uh, we do have one uh, question from a student uh, mm -hmm. saying thanks for an interesting lecture and sharing your great art. I'd love to hear who are your favorite artists from the past yeah. and the artists uh, mm -hmm. who inspire you. Yeah, it's always a nice question. <laughs> so you're going to stay another hour, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, yes, it's always um, um, uh, so. Uh, there are many. Yes, um, hmm. uh, and it keeps changing. I uh, I suppose I'm uh, yeah I'm trying to keep um, discovering, but in context of what I was showing, I think uh, it's good to mention. Um, uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres, uh, uh, so it's late 80s, early 90s, uh, Cuban artist who lived in uh, in US. Uh, um, he was active in New York. Um, he um, he sort of reflected a lot on the idea of um, or on the back then extremely unfortunately uh, present uh, HIV crisis. Uh, um, and um, uh, he has uh, devised um, some methods that I uh, feel are extremely alive still today. So he worked, um, among other people, he worked with posters um, and with the idea of uh, um, sort of um, natural distribution of the work. Um, so that's, uh, that could be one that I uh, highly appreciate. Uh, 
um, I'm thinking what's the someone who's more um, uh, I really like um, Ed Atkins um, um, he's a young guy um, um, English uh, artist who lives in Berlin uh, he works with 3d with uh, certain poetics that I um, that is hard to maybe I can just um, type it in actually Yeah, I think our younger uh, students actually do know him, but maybe not uh, the older one. Yeah, so just type in the names and people can look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Atkins. Uh, so it's a guy who works, um, 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 who sort of fuses poetry and uh, and three D three D animation uh, in an extremely um, interesting way. I would recommend to go and see uh, the um, the show that is currently on in Rudolfinum. It's called the Compassion Fatigue is Over. Uh, part of it is a uh, is a great uh, array of artists. Um, uh, um, among them, uh, it's uh, Jeremy Shaw, which I really like. Um, it's a guy who now uh, works um, with uh, with sort of uh, contemporary. Um, rituals, um, uh, mainly dance parties and um, um, sort of drug in, in, in drug induced um, um, uh, changed uh, consciousness. Um, uh, I think that's a, that's an interesting guy. Um, I I really like um, uh, Yoko Ono. Uh, for some uh, seminal text pieces, um, uh, and also um, I think she um, she um, she was famous only through one song as a musician, but I think it's a brilliant song and it um, it worked as really uh, really strong. Again, emancipatory tool on a uh, on a American club scene in the 80s. Um, uh, it's called uh, Walking on Thin Ice the song uh, but uh, of course I like her as an artist mainly uh, um, mm. uh, I I guess I really like uh, Marketa Otova um, uh, she mainly works with photography I think she's brilliant uh, Oh, it's just it's double A. It's a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, so she is uh, she is really competent in using the photographic language. I think she is like uh, she's really master. Uh, so that's maybe someone from uh, from the local scene. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Unless people have uh, more questions, maybe I just. I think yeah, we're slowly kind of getting to the half past seven uh, anyway. Mm. Uh, I, I just thought maybe for the to close it, to go back to the title uh, that you chose for this uh, talk and the infrastructures of the obvious. So could you maybe just talk a little bit more about? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it, 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 it actually, this is, okay, this is really a really cool question. Uh, so I think it actually, uh, it goes back to what you, what we just talked about, the, the, the sort of empty streets and closed galleries. It's, um, uh, I think it's super interesting to actually observe uh, the uh, normal things in a, in a different circumstance. So uh, I think the title is trying to, um, um, it's, it's a combination of words uh, that I feel are strongly sort of, um, present in my vocabulary. So infrastructure is something that um, is hidden and it's holding, um, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an inside structure. So it's something that is inside, um, uh, underneath. Uh, it basically creates the uh, skeleton of um, uh, either um, physical structures or um, um, yeah, in case of soft um, uh, infrastructures, it's, it's something that, uh, could be called narrative or uh, purpose um, uh, or um, um, I don't know uh, mode of um, organization maybe organization. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, that's something I'm super interested in. And, and it's something that is super present. I'm, uh, I'm kind of always interested in things that are uh, just here, uh, plain inside. Um, but, um, um, and um, uh, I'm, I'm curious about how they work. Uh, I think it's a, it's a maybe maybe it's naive comparison, but it's a bit like a, when a kid is uh, unscrewing a, a little toy car to see how it works. So I think I'm trying to use this as a method um, um, continually. Obviously, I'm using um, um, a different um, different tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And the obvious is uh, again like what uh, what is the obvious? It's uh, it's uh, what we look at, and that's a street full of people, or it's a gallery with things, but. Um, uh, now we have the um, amazing opportunity to um, uh, experience these exactly these cases uh, quite uh, quite differently. So they, suddenly uh, the obvious is not so obvious anymore. Uh, I mean, um, uh, what is it? The obvious. Uh, I mean, a mm, uh, lot of things have changed quite a bit, um, and we're kind of hoping that they will back they will return back to normal. But uh, already now with this, we know that uh, things will be different. We know that we will be uh, probably zoom, zooming quite um, often in the future, even if everything goes well. Um, um, so there are changes to um, how uh, how we uh, live and how we function. Um, and the obvious is new obvious. Yeah, mm -hmm. not so obvious anymore. <laughs> not so obvious anymore. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Fine. I, I mean, we could stay a long time, but the webinar is a weird format, which is what uh, uh, actually Peter Knobloch has just texted me, especially if you're looking from a car, he says it's such a strange mm -hmm. format. So uh, I think this is this is all we have time for. And the, since there are no questions, I just want to thank you again for being our guest. Oh, thank you very much for. Mm. I really appreciate the choice of projects and the variety and complexity, but also these really strong links that I feel exist among them that, that speak of your very particular uh, languages and artists. So thanks a lot and uh, I hope to invite you. I would super much like yeah. to thank you for inviting me. Uh, it was really enjoyable. Um, yeah, I hope we'll get to see. Um, um, exactly. Next time. Um, in uh, yeah, in real life, in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.